Hi, you're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our uh, networks and platforms. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman out there is Rick Levy and Escondido. Rick and I uh, are going to complete our our quadrangle. <laughs> I didn't even know what uh, of of Torres Real. Tor, Tor, Torres Real. I'm, I'm I'm Americanizing that. This we fell all over ourselves with the blanco and the extra añejo. <laughs> Because that's what we had at the time. Now we are going to complete the whole set. So you'll be able to listen to this review from the start to finish. Uh, we are going to be trying the Reposado. What do we know about the Repo? Uh, we know that it has uh, spent 18 months in American White Oak Barrels. Show the book. You got, you got, so, you got a nice I've got book. a book. Very beautiful book. His delivery. Full of very beautiful people. It's a, uh, but it's in Spanish. <laughs> Rick doesn't read Spanish. That, <laughs> well, uh, they have some. They have English translations. As show, well, the, uh, show the show the La Tequilera. Yeah, that's that's Paola uh, Basiles, and Paola is also in our book from babes to boss ladies. You can read more about her views on tequila making. She's very hands-on. Uh, for those of you who follow her on Instagram, they have a wonderful Instagram. They do beautiful pictures. She is a certified uh, maestra tequilera. And uh, my understanding is she's been opening up territories all summer long in 2019. So she's been in parts of Southern California. She's been in Washington State. Um, and... Obviously, well funded. <laughs> it looks like. Yeah. So the book talks a lot about the uh, the general process of tequila making. Um, you know how a quality tequila is made. It doesn't talk a lot about exactly what their process is, but we do have a spread here where it gives some tasting notes and it has like the uh, the uh, barrel information, um, and you know that's about it. That's what we know. Yeah, uh, it's right. from Nam 1479, okay. uh, Campania Taquillera. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna let you say it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay stop. Stop. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, it's it's from La Capilla, so it's uh, it's Compañía Tequilera Hacienda La Capilla. Uh, this is known 1479. And um, from the pictures that I have seen that she had, was nice enough to supply us with for the book and, and um, uh, a future uh, feature on Tequila Aficionado, she is very hands-on. Uh, they, they do shred, they shred the, uh, the agave. They, they bake in, I believe it's autoclaves, so if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, she's very much into her process and into the beauty of tequila. And if you read... Her interview in the book, she's she very much wants to present tequila as an element as, as Mexico in a bottle. She's she's very much like that, very patriotic, and you can't blame her. Um, we fell all over ourselves with the Blanco. The the Reposado is a bronze medal winner in 2018 to the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. I don't know if you can see the seal right there, uh, but I say let's taste the juice. I like the color, man. Yeah, that is a pretty color, and, uh, she and has I'm pants. I'm sure we have already nominated the line for its packaging. Yes, we did. Uh, I am going to. Uh, what am I? Okay, uh, I am going to try the uh, reposado in my in a, a heavily a heavier. This this is the Stasol Jarrito, but it is the prototype. It's got a heavy base. So I'm going to try it there. I love those prototypes. I like that heavy base. Yeah, a lot of men do. A lot of guys like it heavier, but, you know, for packaging purposes and, and for cost, cost effectiveness is a little too much glass. It's all um, about that base. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those of you who, who Ooh. musically impaired will never get that, that musical <laughs> reference. Uh, Let's see. Let's see what we get. And Rick was was immediately happy with that. Yeah, I'm getting like some dried fruit right away off the uh, nose. Uh, 
Can I just say, Rick, this is much more like it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, you, you, this is an inside we, joke. You, you folks, <laughs> unless you know that we, we tape all these out of sequence a lot of times. We had just gotten through doing another tequila that was a complete disaster, and, and we were both miserable at the end of that one. Match up the shirts and the backgrounds on YouTube, and you'll yeah, figure out which line it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to change my shirt, and neither did Rick, so there we go. I love these wood notes. They're, they're yeah, it's beautiful. Lighter. It's a... Uh, did you say these were used barrels or, or new barrels? Does it say? It doesn't say. It says American oak. So, you know, I presume it's used. Yeah. Um, the color is, is kind of a, uh, a drab, you know, straw color. Maybe a little deeper than straw. Yeah. Nice legs and tears, though. I don't know if you can see that on my, on, on my screen, but very pretty. Very nice presentation on that. That's just, that's just so nice. <laughs> it's so refreshing. Yeah. Uh, it's just tequila and, and barrel. And, and you know, the, the barrel, of course, is adding a, a little more of a, of a top layer. And what, 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 am, what does the, uh, the ticket, is it, in, uh, let's see. Um, it, this is in Spanish, but I'm going to translate on the fly here. It's a, uh, it's a golden. Uh, uh, it's golden with a robust body, and notes of agave, wood, and uh, and spices. Oh, there it is in English too. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Your I'm, translation was excellent. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, when you can when you can read Spanish, why read the translation, right? Um, sometimes it, sometimes the translations don't always come through. I think that's what I was getting on the nose. I was getting the, the, the little bit of the spiciness, but primarily the agave that I remember. And it's been a while. It's been, it's been a few months since Eric and I have, have, have tasted the original. We did the Blanco and the uh, Extra Nejo first. The, uh, the follow-through from the aroma is, uh, is really in sync. <clears throat> oh, my. <clears throat> Wow. Oh, wow. There is some really good character on this Reposado. Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. The spiciness comes through. It's almost like a, like a cinnamon. The baking spices on the nose with cinnamon on the palate and, the, and some pepper on the explosion in, the, in mid palate. Nice, warm, fuzzy finish. Wow, this is a real, this is a, they're right when they're talking about the, the body. It's got a great structure. Yeah, it really does. It's almost, you know, it's almost like an Añejo. I was going to say, uh, there are Añejos that have that kind of structure. Yeah. Wow. That's really great. And you can still, you know, there's still the agave presence, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of what, you know, really what you look for in an aged tequila. This is really bold for a reposado. Remember a couple of years ago, I think you and, and Alex, I, I, I said this to both of you, and I said, you know, it seems like the reposado was making a comeback. Right. And it used to be just a, a halfway point, a stopover. And, yeah. uh, you know, now they're really making statements with them. Yeah, well, you know, uh, and even earlier on, Alex and I did Mi Campo which only comes in a Blanco and Reposado, and they're both aged in like wine barrels. And, and they only have those two, ver those two expressions, but it's almost like the Repo is acting like both the Repo and the Añejo. You know what I mean? So it's cost effective for the consumer with the, that particular brand was looking to attract millennials. But in this case, wow, this has got enough body. I would, I would even pair this with a, with a, with a cigar. Right. I was thinking the same thing. A nice mild cigar with the with the repo and you're good, man. You don't have you have to delve into the anehold or we're going to. 
<laughs> what else can we say about this? This is a again female driven. This is this is the Maestra Tequilera is a is a woman, Paula Basiles, wonderful lady. Um, if you want to read more about her, you can do that on Babes to Boss Ladies. It's our book that's available on Amazon. Um, really very patriotic woman loves what she does very hands-on yeah um uh very attractive lady but a, a mother a uh, very doting mother as a matter of fact i believe her daughter's gymnast and, and it's funny because it's You're going like, off on a tangent here Mike. Well, no, <laughs> the thing is, you know, we follow each other on instagram and and facebook and it seems that she is she is um uh planning her her uh, opening her states her territories with with her daughter's competitions wherever the competition is taking her she's concentrating so she's doing a dual she's trying to juggle both both balls up in the air at the same time and she's and she's you know it's cool it's cool to watch because it's actually being very successful she's been very um uh uh very well received in Southern California and in Washington State, and I don't know where else. I, I'm sure she's coming to Texas. Sooner or later, we're going to have her knocking on my door, probably. But um, what do you think, dude? Brandon, promise now. Yeah, yeah. You know, this would be a, a great after dinner sipper. Um, you know, I could certainly uh, make my Manhattans with it. Not that I yeah. would necessarily want to mix with it, but yep. uh, I, I agree. Uh, I was say is enough there's enough structure and body that it'll hold up to a really good cocktail and and like i say it's behaving like an añejo yeah you know this isn't this isn't a repo where they're just kind of rounding out the corners on the blanco to make a mild margarita or something like that you know this is uh it's certainly making a statement uh i think it i don't know who what, what won the gold and and the and the silver but uh, I think it's well worth. I think it should it should have uh, placed higher, but that's my opinion. Uh, I think it's it's well worth the medal that it got, and and as a brand of promise nominee, we're definitely going to nominate this one. This is Torres Real, Torres Torres Real, um, from Nome. Uh, for, was it 1479? Beautiful design on the bottle too. Uh, I think I, I think the packaging is gorgeous. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram. She's got a gift pack of the three seven fives that fit like in a box. Very attractive. Very cool stuff. So she's you. You notice the little details, the little the ribbon, you know, the the, the figure, um, and yet it's a it's a very substantial bottle. So uh, lots of lots of nice little details. You're, you're getting a lot. Do we know what the price point is for this right now? Yeah. So uh, the repo seems to be going for uh, between fifty and sixty dollars. It's worth it. I, I'd pay that much for it. That's following on the blanco around uh, you know thirty-seven to forty. Okay. Okay. Well, that's about right. Um, you know, this is this is. This is a tequila that's uh, that's setting itself apart, you know, uh, uh, from the normal, from the norm that you'll you'll be seeing on the on the shelves. So um, I think it's well worth it, man. I do. Brand of Promise nominee. That is our take on Taurus Real. I'm Mike Morales here in uh, San Antonio, Texas. That gentleman out there is Rick Levy and Escondido. You have been watching and listening. Uh, on po all the podcasting places that you download your podcast. You've been you're listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media, all of our channels. Please follow us on all the social media. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, for instance. Um, and, you know, if you want to subscribe to any of our, uh, where you listen to your podcasts or where you watch us on Instagram, please do so. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>